Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Uh, as promised, we're with our brain whisperer, Stephen Campbell. <laughs> good morning, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be here. I, I just enjoy this time. Yeah, well, we love having you as well, um, uh, Steve. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we're doing a series of these uh, uh, videos, and uh, this next one is really intriguing to me because there's one thing about putting these images in your mind about how you are and re and replacing or pushing back uh, uh, other things that we don't want uh, to to accomplish or, st or stay like. Uh, but setting the goals is, would seem to me is one of the more important things. In other words, uh, I can want to lose weight, but saying I'm going to be a 120 year, 20 pound person is unrealistic. I'm mm -hmm. never going to, I'm never going to be that. My bones weigh more than 120 pounds. Okay. So uh, how do you set goals that are really, and you know, so if I said I wanted to lose a uh, hundred pounds in six weeks, that's not going to work. No. Okay. So, um, and for almost anything you want to do, I know that you have a whole series of uh, uh, hints on uh, on how to properly set goals. Could you share some of that with us sure. today? Absolutely. Let's start with this. The fact that our brain has three time frames: the past, the present, and the future. So you have some people you've met who always live in the past, the good old days. They say, well, I live in the good old days when things are great and things are wonderful. And uh, I am 73 years old, and I don't remember when I was young that there being the good old days, but they always live in the good old days. And, and therefore, their mind are always going to be in the past. So they're not going to grow too much. It's just the way. Okay. Then you have the people who always live in the present. They say, I live in the here and now. I'm just being realistic. I am i don't live in a dream world. I'm just being practical. Um, so what will tomorrow always look like in their minds? The present. So there really isn't too much growth there. Um, okay. So then you have the people who live in the future, but in a very, very, very special way. They live in the future because they see their goals being accomplished right now. I, boy, Steve, that really confuses me. What are you talking about? So let's talk about that now. I'm going to get into a different psychology called Gestalt psychology. Gestalt psychology really began in the early 1900s in Berlin. And it developed, first of all, as a society and then it became a psychology and there are gestalt psychologists all over the world and what basically they say is that the brain hates gaps g-a-p-s what do you mean steve the brain hates gaps it hates them let me explain my favorite time of the year is Christmas. I love Christmas. I have a number of benchmarks in my life. The first benchmark is the Sonoma County Fair, which is the end of July, 1st of August. That means that we're closer to Christmas than away from Christmas. So now I'm getting excited. And then Christmas stuff starts showing up at Lowe's in August, and then Costco in September, and I get to go up and down the aisles and see all the new Christmas stuff. And then you have the Labor Day and Halloween and Thanksgiving. And then people start putting up their Christmas lights. Where are you going with all this, Steve? When you see Christmas lights on a person's house and they're moving, are they actually moving? Of course not. They're, drink they're, they're blinking sequentially. And your brain fills in the gaps. That's gestalt. So let me give you another example. I have spoken literally all over the world. And I was speaking in Idaho. And to get back to San Francisco, I had to go to the uh, Atlanta airport. The Atlantic airport is the busiest airport in the world. Did you know that? I didn't know that. The busiest airport in the world. It's huge. They have their own train. They have everything. It's like a shopping center. 
So I had about a three or four hour layover. I got to the Atlantic airport and I lost my wallet in an airport. And you need identification for everything. And there my wallet was gone. And for the next three hours, I retraced my steps and could not find it. I think someone picketed my pocket or pocketed my picketed or I always get that incorrect. Someone picked my picked my pocket. I think, but I never found it, okay? However, there was a gap in my life. The gap was I didn't have my wallet. And my brain hates gaps. And the only thing I did for the next three hours is try to find that wallet. Because what if somebody got it and are using my money and the whole thing, okay? Fortunately, everyone is very, very gracious and I got to fly home. I never did find the wallet. But here's the point. There was a huge gap. And the gap was my wallet is missing and my brain hates gaps. So it drove me to find the wallet, which I never did find. Okay. Now, how does that apply to goals? Here's how most of our goals are expressed. I will lose that weight. I will pay off that loan. I will take that trip to Alaska. Here's what your brain says. Your brain says, great, wonderful. I'm excited about all this. I'm going to go take a nap. Why? <laughs> because the brain says, I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. I can't control the future. So you put your goals out there in the future, and I don't have to do a thing. And I love that because I want you to stay just the way you are. I want you to stay the same. I don't like change. So you stay, you keep your goals all in the future, and I don't have to do anything. That's why most of our goals don't work. I've worked with a number of businesses and a number of huge insurance companies, including State Farm. All of their, their business plans were in the future. We will do this. We will do that. We will do this. We'll, and I work with them. And I said, you know what? This stuff needs to be in the present tense right now. So let's talk about that. When we say, I will do this, the brain says, good luck. What we need to say instead of, I've lost that weight already. And I paid that loan off already. And I've taken that trip to Alaska already. And you know what the brain does? The brain freaks out. It says, wait a minute. Look at the scale. Look at the mirror. You haven't lost that pound. You're still 240. And then you say, I'm locking on to that. My goal is I am already 200 pounds. I'm already paid off that loan. I've already taken that trip to Alaska. Here's the problem. You haven't lost that weight. You haven't taken that trip. You haven't paid off the loan. That's the gap. And the brain hates gaps. So now it must face this. Either lose the weight or there's going to be a gap there. And I said to myself, no, 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 I see myself at 200 pounds and I look great. I've paid off that loan. I'm taking that trip. And now the brain says, now we have a problem. Because you're saying this is true and it isn't true. The first thing it wants to do is say, give up, Steve. It's not going to work. Just forget it. You're being unreal. loves the word unrealistic. You're being unrealistic. And that's when I had to say, I'm paying off that loan already. And I'm taking that trip and I've lost that weight and I look great. When I say that over time, the brain begins to say, okay, you're locking onto that. Well, I guess I need to help you lose the weight. And we need to find a way to take the trip to Alaska. So let me give you a story that really illustrates this. We have two daughters. Our youngest daughter wanted to go to the University of San Francisco for her college education. We were very excited about that. The problem is USF is very, 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 very expensive. 
And if you're a teacher, you're not teaching for the money. So we didn't have the money for her to go to USF. So on a Sunday night, we gathered together as a family. And we prayed, and then we created an affirmation, Sarah going to USF and us finding the money to do so. The next day, I was driving to work, taking the same route I'd taken for seven years. Down Yolanda, turn right on 101, go north. This time, on the Monday, after the Sunday night where we said Sarah's going to USF, I saw a sign on the freeway that I had never seen before. What did the sign say? University of San Francisco. Right in my own backyard, right in Santa Rosa, seven miles from me. For seven years, I had taken that route. I had never seen that sign. Now I did. Why? Because when we set up a goal, as if it's already done, the brain looks for ways to get that goal complete. Because what? It hates gaps. It's like my wallet. You got to find the wallet. We have to find a way to get Sarah to USF and pay for it. So I began looking around, and there it was, USF in my own backyard. Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. So I taught for the day, and then on the way home, I stopped by USF, set up a meeting. The next week, I came in and applied for a job at USF. I had just, per I had just written my first two books on computer software, so I brought those with me. Sat down, talked about my working for USF, and they said, I'm sorry, you really can't, Steve, because you don't have, an upper, you don't have a graduate degree. You have to have either a, a PhD or a master's to teach here at USF. I said, well, thank you very much, and I appreciate that, and I thought that was the end of it. They called me six months later, and they said, Steve, this is USF. You know what? There's a class coming up right here in Santa Rosa on computer software, and you wrote the book. The problem is the book never sold. I think we sold 18 copies in Australia. That was it. And I said, well, the book never sold. And said, she said, we don't care. You're a published, you're a, you are a published author. So we'd like for you to teach here at USF. And I said, I can't. I don't have a master's. I don't have a graduate degree. Yes, but because you're a published author, we're going to grandfather you in. And while you're getting your master's, while you are teaching, you can get your master's here at USF. How can I pay for it? Well, for every course that you teach, we'll, we'll give you a credit for you for you USF work. And then I said, can that work with my daughter? And they said, absolutely. So for the next 10 years, I taught for USF all over the Bay Area. And for all those classes, they gave me the credit. It paid for our daughter's education and my master's. And I figured it out one time when you put in how many, how much tuition we never had to pay and how much money they were paying me for our teach, I made about $85,000 on a book that never sold. That's the way the brain works. So what do we do with this? Create your goals in the now. It's already done. You're already there. You've already made this money. You've already lost this weight. You've already, you decide. As if it's already there, you lock onto that. And the brain hates gaps, so it becomes your bestest friend to close that gap. Let me give you another illustration. I was teaching this at a particular college, and I said to, one, to my class, somebody give me a goal that they want in their life. And Mary raised her hand, one of the students. She said, yes, Mr. Campbell, my goal is to use 30 pounds in... Uh, six months. And I said, that's really good. I'm really proud of you, Mary. That's wonderful. Can we, can we decrease that time maybe to five months? And she said, hmm, um, okay, yeah, I think I can lose it in maybe five months. Can we go down to four months? Well, let's see, 30 pounds divided by four is seven and a half. Seven and a half pounds time divided by four weeks per month is two pounds a month a week so yes i can do that i said that's great mary can we go down to three months hmm that's losing two pounds in one month mr campbell that's really pushing it i'm not there though. let's go down to two months <gasps> mr campbell you can't lose 15 pounds in one month i'm not there yet let's go down to one month mr campbell are you nuts that's seven and a half pounds a week can't be done 
I'm not there yet. Let's go down to three weeks. Mr. Campbell, now you're really getting me scared. Let's go down to two weeks. Mr. Campbell, you're freaking me out. Let's go down to one week. Mr. Campbell, no, no, no. Let's go down to six days, five days, four days, three days, two days, one day. Now, I've already lost the weight now, but you haven't. But in your mind, you have. The brain hates gaps. So it says, now we got to figure out a way to lose that weight as soon as we can, because you're saying to yourself, it's already done. And the brain becomes your best friend to meet the goals that you want in your life. Wow. That's exciting. Steve, um, the, the answer to all of this goal setting then is to have a goal and accept it as it as done. So you're avoiding the trap, if you will, of future. If my goal is if Mary's goal is to lose weight in six months, mm -hmm. your brain doesn't do anything about it because it's somewhere in the so far in the future. That's right. It's irrelevant, and That's right. you don't lose the weight. I've it's not going to lose the weight the night that, before. Yeah, I've got six months to lose that weight, so I'll do it maybe the last two or three months. And it right. and it does. That's what it does because the and brain never wants you to lose that weight. And it never comes. It'll it last two or comes. three months. Never. See, something I so, can re I can relate to is that um, uh, I uh, throughout my life um, uh, earlier, maybe the first thirty years, I ran sales forces, but before that, I was a salesperson. And I was okay. I went out there, I banged on doors. I knew it was a numbers game. You had to do that. And then all of a sudden I went from a okay salesperson to one of the top three in any organization I was in. And the reason I did it is I assumed the sale. You go, go in and you assume you're going to close the deal every time. That's right. Now, you don't close it every time. But That's if right. you assume you're going to close it every time because you have a good product, then the likelihood is that you're going to be presenting it in such a way that causes the, the uh, uh, potential client to buy your product. That's and I, exactly I saw right. it happen over and over and over again. So I always assumed I was going to get a deal. And that's how it works. Yeah, that, that's how it works. Yeah. Well, yeah. powerful. So yeah. Steve, Steve, we set a goal and the goal has to be realistic, even yeah. though even though what we're telling ourselves is something unrealistic, and that is, I've accomplished the goal. Yeah. Let me share with you my sister, Sally. I have, I have five siblings, Shirley, Sally, Steve, Susie, Scott, Skip. Sally uh, is my older sister. She uh, passed away, but she was very, very short. She was five foot two, and she had always had a challenge with her weight. And uh, so I wrote my third book, Making Your Mind Magnificent, and I would send her copies of the chapters to have to get her opinion on it. So she was the first person to read my book. When the book was finally published, she looked at it and she read it. And she got to the affirmation point, which we'll talk about. And her affirmation was, I look fantastic at 120 pounds. She was 192 when she made this affirmation. And she's five foot two. So you can imagine the challenge that she had. Well, she called me a couple months later and she said, Steve, here's the problem. I can't see myself at 120. I don't think that's realistic. And I said to myself, and well, I didn't say to her, but I said, I don't think it's realistic either, Steve. Sally, can you see yourself at 100 and, and not at 80? She said, yes, I can. Let's start with that. Oh, okay. That's more realistic. So we create an affirmation at 180, and about a couple months later, she called and she said, I'm there. I said, let's go down another 10 pounds. She said, no, 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 let's go down another 20 pounds. So we created another affirmation for her to be at 160, and it took longer, but she met that. When she got 150, she said, you know what, Steve? I look great. This is realistic. Here's the test. If you can't see yourself doing it, it's probably unrealistic. 
So you need to ratchet yourself a little bit back to the point where you can see yourself actually accomplishing this. So I can't see myself as a millionaire, but I can see myself, and I'm not going to basically, but I can see myself making a certain amount of money. That's what I lock on to. I can't see myself being, but I can see myself doing that. Okay, And the brain loves that. The brain's not stupid. So when you make it realistic, the brain says, oh, I can do this. But when it's so realistic, the brain's going to give up. Because as I said in past presentations to you, the brain hates change. The brain doesn't like change. The brain doesn't want you to be uncomfortable. The brain's job is to keep you safe. So it always wants to be realistic. So if you can't so want to doing it, it's probably unrealistic. So we want to create a goal that's realistic, but we want to tell ourselves that we're there now. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not next week, next next month. Okay. We're we're already there. We're there. We lock. Remember the story I told you of the rock on the road where my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle, mm -hmm. and he sure. said, "Don't run into that rock." And I got down the bike, ran right into it. That's the way this works. Yeah. You lock on to what you want. And you say to yourself, I'm already there. And the brain says, but you're not there. You're not there. You're not there. And first of all, it wants to give up. First of all, it says, no, 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 give up. This is all this new right. psychological crap. That's stupid. But you lock on to that and you say, okay, uh, you're really doing this. And so I'm going to help you. I'm going to help lock you. On, lock locking on to it means repeating it. Repeating it. When you hit temptation, That's when right. you hit a snag in the road, when you get discouraged, you have to lock onto it and you have to repeat it. When you look at the scale on Monday and you've gained three pounds, you lock onto it. You say, okay, that's part of the whole thing. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep the doing next it. time. And, the I, next and those time. are the words you gave us last time. That's Use right. Use those words. The next always, time. Always. The next time. There's never, yeah. you'll never use up your, your next time, which Good. is so wonderful. Steve, okay. this has been, for me, this has been terrific because you've um, helped me understand, I don't know what you call it, the relationship, the balance between setting the goals and, being realistic and, and a, a realistic goal and dealing with the now, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, making it happen mm -hmm. uh, that I believe it's done. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Again, it, it's all up here. Every single time I drive by the Golden Gate Bridge, because I live north of the Golden Gate, I'm amazed at what they've done. The Golden Gate Bridge did not begin with somebody's plans. It began in the mind of one person, which in this case was a reporter for the San Francisco Gazette. He had the vision. It began in his mind. And then he got everyone together to actually build it. But everything, everything begins up here. Everything which is so wonderful because you're in control. People say, no, I'm not. The problem is when people say, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not in control. What does your brain say? Okay, yeah, you're right, you're not. <laughs> but when you say, oh, I learned this from this guy called the brain whisperer and I am in control. Okay, I am in control. And the brain says, no, you're not. You say, yes, I am. And the brain says, oh, okay, because you're the boss, and I believe what you tell it. That's exciting. That's lock on. People say, mm -hmm. why? I, when I taught this in colleges, and people say, why wasn't this taught 40 years ago? Because we didn't know this 40 years ago. This really began in the early 60s with the number of books and number of studies. Guide to Rasha Living, uh, Dr. Ramachandran's book, Phantoms in the Brain, a lot of other things. This is relatively new stuff. So I'm excited because I get to share this. I've been able to share this with people around the world. I went to India last went last year. That was quite a, a trip. Mm. And it was exciting. That's great. Exciting stuff. Good. And, and now, now the I people get, that... And now I get to... I met you guys. And you yeah. gave me this. And, and, I, just, and, ooh, and I get I get the chills. And we have a goal that's very attainable, which is to thank you this time. Until oh. next time. There will be a next time. That's... It's not... That's... I'm, our goal. We know that it's totally doable. And uh, we look forward to seeing you the next time. As always, Stephen, thank you. This has been thank you. just thank so, you. so uh, eye-opening. And uh, uh, we, we thank you for sharing 
your knowledge with us. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.